Hey guys, welcome back to 44's channel. If you're new here, my name is Jess and I am the creator of 44. So today's video is the 10th video in the series, The 12 Laws of the Universe. If you'd like to see the other nine episodes and the other nine laws, there's a playlist on my channel. So just go look up playlist and you'll see the 12 laws of the universe and then you can watch the other ones there. And of course you can also watch it in order or you can watch it in any old order. There is no specific order with the 12 laws of the universe. I personally believe that whichever one you feel gravitated towards watching or learning about, then that's the one for you. Don't just do what other people are telling you to do or what you feel like it should be. Go with your gut feeling. Okay, so this 10th law is called the law of polarity, which you'll see in the title. So I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, they are polar opposites. So if you know if you get, say example, two best friends and the one friend is blonde and they're extremely A-type personality, they can be a little bit pessimistic at times and they're very neat and orderly and then we have person b they are a brunette example and they are type b they very go with the flow maybe they're extremely outgoing and optimistic then we would say that these two people are polar opposites because well these two best friends are polar opposites because they are just completely opposite each other so the law of polarity says that everything has an opposite and you can't have the one without the other so I don't know if you remember, but I remember at school they always used to teach us those opposites. We used to do it in English and Afrikaans, but you know, opposites, hot, cold, sad, happy, long, short, fat, thin, rich, poor, inside, outside, up, down. So those would be all the opposites. But then what's really cool about the law of polarity is, if example, we look at the media, so from my perspective, the media tends to focus on all the negative things happening in the world, all the awful things. Sometimes I'll, I mean, I hardly go on to the news at all because it just makes me feel so awful. But if, for example, I find myself on a, a news outlet, it will tend to focus on all the negative things. And, and I'll wonder, like, why am I even on this planet? <laughs> like... You know when you just walk away i'm sure you you know what you know what it feels like but with that just that hopeless feeling where you're just like oh people are awful this world is awful is that that's what the media tends to talk about like all the corrupt people and all the horrible people and all the selfish people and it's just not a very nice feeling like i personally don't feel really good when i look at the media but what's really cool about the law of polarity is that it's saying as much as all this evilness and horribleness may exist in the same respect, the opposite exists. So if you could think of the worst, most horrible, imaginable thing, if you if you know that that exists, then the opposite of that exists. So the most wonderful, incredible, amazing thing would exist as well. Which I think is like a really nice perspective because bear in mind that the media can, the media tends to only focus on the one point of view. And the really good and amazing and incredible things in life aren't necessarily being reported. We aren't necessarily seeing them, but they do exist. Like the law of polarity says that, <laughs> that like they do exist. Extreme happiness and wonderfulness and the opposite of all that media stuff exists. And there is like hope in humanity. And then with two different extremes, we do sometimes tend to think that the one is bad and the other one is good. But the thing is, is that both extremes can offer something and you can learn from both things. So there's no such thing really as this is good and this is bad. It's just merely your perspective on the situation. So example, if we take day and night, they would be seen as polar opposites. And in the daytime example, we can, it, it allows us to see the objects around us. But then at night, we can't necessarily see those objects around us. But the plus side of it is that we can become more aware. Like, you know, when your awareness is, is sharpened, I don't know if you find that, like when I'm walking around at night, I'm more like aware of everything happening around me and I can hear certain sounds that I wouldn't have heard in the day. So maybe your other senses could become more sharper during night. So both of them have something 
incredibly valuable but it, it's up to you to see that valuableness in whichever polar opposite you're in. Now I think something that's extremely important to highlight about the law of polarity is that it works on a scale. So with all of these we might have been like oh hot is one thing and cold is one another thing or darkness is one thing and lightness is another thing. Or, oh, yeah, darkness and light is another thing. But that's not how it, it works. It works on a scale. So, say, imagine you have a scale over here, and then you have, and this also links with the law of relativity, but you have a scale, and then you have hot over here and cold over here. These are the two extremes. You need the one in order to give meaning to the other one. So, if you only had hot, what does that even mean? Like you can't have, how do you even know what hot is? You don't know, I mean, but hot and cold ultimately both link to temperature. So hot is just a higher temperature and then cold would be a lower temperature, but they're both the same things. And you don't know if something's hot until you compare it to something which you think is cold. So if I had two temperatures, so a hundred degrees, and then we had 20 degrees, we might say that 100 degrees is hot and we might say 20 degrees is cold. But then if we had another temperature that was minus 50, then we would say, oh, like 20 is not too bad, but minus 50 is really cold. So you can see with the law of polarity, it's not just like one and then the other one and they don't have anything to do with each other. So the law of polarity is saying that opposites are identical in nature but they're different in degree. So with the, with the hot and cold example, they both link to temperature, but they just have different temperatures. So another way we can look at all of this would be example, on the one hand, you could say this has heat and the other one has an absence of heat. Or example, this has light and this has an absence of light. So they both are of the same thing, but they're just the one has more than the other one has. Or maybe this one has absolutely none of it, and then this one has an excess of it. Now I'm going to talk about manifestation and how you can use the law of polarity to get what you want in life. So there's this video on the law of polarity that I watched, and it's by this man called David Neagle. I'll insert the link below in the description box, but I would really recommend that you go watch this video. It really gave me a new perspective on the law of polarity, and using the law of polarity for your benefit and to get what you want. So with the law of polarity and manifestation, the trick is, is that if you reject one part of the scale, you are rejecting the whole scale. Okay, so you may be wondering what does that mean or how is it relevant or like you don't, you don't really understand. So example, if you had a scale and you decided that you don't want this part of the scale or you don't like this part of the scale, if this doesn't exist, then this doesn't exist because in order for a scale to exist, you need two ends. So if you don't like the one end, then the scale doesn't exist and therefore the other thing doesn't exist. And in order to make sense of this part of the scale, you need this part of the scale. So you need the whole whole, you need the whole whole in, all, in order to make sense of it. And in order for it to be of in, well, to be in existence, Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this first using David Neagle's story, and then I'm going to use my own story. But so David Neagle said that he was earning a certain amount of money, and then he classified it on the poor point of view, and he decided he wanted to earn more money. So he decided to to double that amount. So first it was I think it was twenty thousand a year, twenty thousand dollars a year, which was what he was earning, and then he said he wanted to earn forty thousand dollars a year. So what he did was that he said, okay, I'm going to earn $40,000 a year. He had an, an intention. He wanted to get onto the other side of the scale. So instead of being on the poor side, he wanted to move over onto the rich side. So he set that as, as his intention. And then the second step that he took was that he started to really love and appreciate where he was. So he started, to, he changed his attitude. So instead of coming to work and complaining about how awful it was and how he wasn't making a lot of money and he hates his job and he hates all the all his co-workers and he feels drained every single day 
and he's not finding meaning in his work. He stopped doing that and he, he walked in and said, okay, I'm going to be the best worker I can be. He put 100% into his job. He showed up in a very happy way. He spoke to his co-workers better. He just started coming to work and being really grateful and happy that he even had a job. I, th I think I remember him saying that he, he was like, at least I even have a job. So he started to see the everyday goodness in his job and then because of that his frequency went up so in the previous videos and at the beginning of the series actually the second video i spoke about the law of vibration and that's definitely for me the biggest and the most important puzzle of manifestation and getting what you want i think it's extremely important to understand the law of vibration the law of vibration is saying that everything around us has frequencies and different emotions have different frequencies. So emotions such as happiness, joy, enlightenment have very high frequencies and emotions such as shame and guilt and sadness and anger would have lower frequencies. And then with the law of, attrac with the law of attraction, your frequency is going to attract things that match that frequency. So when he came to work and even though he was only earning $20,000, a year which he's classified as poor he just was super happy with his job and super grateful and super like enthusiastic and because of that his his frequency went up his vibration went up and then he ended up seeing an opportunity that had apparently been there for two years but he just hadn't noticed it and then he took the opportunity and it was like a risk but he decided to take it and then by the end of the year he was earning sixty thousand dollars a year which was triple the amount of what he was originally earning. So he earned even more than what he said. And it all came down to setting an intention and then changing his attitude. So that's a very important part of the law of polarity. He didn't say, ah, oh, I don't like being poor. This is horrible. I'm going to reject this part of the scale. I only want to be on that part of the scale. So I'm going to reject this part. He said, okay, let me actually accept this part, love this part of the scale. And truly just come into acceptance with the scale and realize that I'm doing well in the scale and I am happy so at this part of the scale so that he changed his attitude and then because he embraced part of the scale then he got to access the other side of the scale so I've really seen this example in my own life when I've embraced the part of the scale which I didn't like that's when I actually ended up accessing the other end of the scale so I did mention the story in The Law of Action, but I'm just going to repeat it again. But when I went to university, I didn't know anyone really there. I was the, the people from my school didn't go to my university and I was very much alone. And for like a whole year, I didn't have any friends. I, like I kind of made some friends, but, it, but all in all, I wasn't connecting with anyone and a lot of the time I was alone and I felt absolutely awful every time I used to see these other people in big groups and it seemed like everyone else had friends and I was the only person who didn't have any friends. So it was, it was horrible, it was awful. I felt like super lonely. So like for the whole of the first year I didn't have friends but then through all of that I ended up like learning how to spend time with myself and learning that I actually liked my own company and I, I was doing okay by myself. I ended up accessing things that I wouldn't have accessed if I was with other people. And the one big thing is that when you are with other people, you can sometimes be very influenced by their ideas and what they want. And I realized that when I was by myself, I could actually hear my own voice and do what I wanted to do and not get pressured by other people. So that was a big thing that I learned. And then when second year came around, instead of being all like, oh, ho, ho, like, poor me, woe is me, like I'd been the previous year, I just said, okay, it's fine, like, you, you spent a whole year without a friend, well, without, like, without that connection, you survived. And I did say, like, you do still have friends from school, so I did keep that in mind, like, you're not completely alone, like, you do have people who love you, <laughs> just maybe not here yet. But I was like, okay, it's fine, even if no one likes you or no one speaks to you, it's not the end of the day. You have learned that you have, you can live by yourself, you can function on your own, you have like good ideas and you aren't necessarily pressured by other people. And I just was saying that to myself, I was like, I didn't have this like, oh, I need to meet someone, I need to like have a friend or whatever. I was like, if you do, cool, if you don't, fine, you can function on your own. 
and then I started to show up, I was more confident, I was like, yay, I felt like, I just felt more confident, and then it was, it was like, I think in about March, so probably like two months or, you know, about two months after we'd started university, I saw this girl in my philosophy class and I'd seen she was in my course and like when I saw her I was like hmm I feel like I should get to know her and then I was a little bit scared but then eventually I encouraged myself to sit next to her. The one time she, there was a, there was an empty space next to her when I walked into the class and then I was like okay I'm gonna sit next to her and then I sat next to her and she was incredible and then she became my best friend and it was just like really this instant connection. So through that I really realized that in order for me to have attracted that, I had to actually become content with with who I was without it. And I was completely like utterly content and happy with myself. I wasn't like, I need this, I need this. Ugh. I mean, I did say, oh, obviously it would be nice to have that connection, but I was like, okay, cool, I would like that, but I'm just going to be super happy where I am now. And then that's how I ended up attracting what I wanted. So it's really cool. It's like, the law of polarity is saying that, well, like <laughs> the application of the law of polarity is like you have to actually come to terms and accept the one part of the scale in order to get to the other part of the scale. And that links to with money and all of that. Like sometimes with the law of attraction, people want to use the law of attraction and get what they want. They want to earn a lot more money, but then their mindset and their frequency is more focused on not having money, not liking this part of the scale and focusing on the debts and then because of that your, your vibration is low and you're just going further down the scale as opposed to saying okay like I'm here I have survived up to this point what are the good things about this particular situation bear in mind that sometimes we have to experience one thing in order to appreciate another thing and genuinely the one part of the scale can teach you things that the other part of the scale can't teach you. So example, when people go without, they end up learning a whole bunch of things that you might just take for granted, you know, if you have everything. If everything gets handed to you, what are you actually going to appreciate? You're just going to be like... <laughs> but if you, if you can compare that to another situation where you didn't have, I feel like you'll learn more. And I also feel like people can learn more when they go through situations of pain or not getting what they want or feeling like a failure. I, I feel like those are the moments where you really can grow the most as a human. So yes, that's the law of polarity. And just to repeat everything, I think if you're in a situation and say that you would really want to attract another thing. So the, the steps that I would say or suggest that you follow is the first thing is to set an intention of where you want to be. So if you're on this side of the scale, say I'd really like to get to that side of the scale and you can be specific if that feels better. And then after you've made that intention, then just focus on where you are now and feel immense gratitude and happiness for where you are now really try to show up with a really great attitude and just like something that can help uh, as I said is to look at that situation and say what can I learn from this because once you start thinking about what you can learn you can start seeing the point of why you were in that situation and you can see that you're actually better off as a human because you went through this experience because you were on this side of the scale the side of the scale you ended up learning a lot through that. Hello, I just had to jump in because I'm busy editing the video and I realized something. So I was busy talking about how it can help to reflect on your situation and see what you can learn from it. And I realized, so you know earlier I was talking about how different emotions have different frequencies. You can look on Google and you can see a chart of exactly, it tells you what each, what, what frequency of vibration each emotion has. And the highest frequency of, of vibration, that, well, the emotion with the highest frequency of vibration is enlightenment. And I just thought that that was really cool because that links with learning. So if you're in a situation and you don't like it, but you sit and you reflect on it and you really go into it and see why am I in this situation? What is this teaching me? Then that can lead you to enlightenment. And that is a high frequency of, that's the highest frequency of vibration. 
which means that you would, would probably be able to attract something that you're looking for because of that. So yeah, just had to add that. I thought it was super important. And then another thing that you can do is to focus on the solution, focus more on how you could get yourself out of that situation as opposed to focusing on like the problem and all these things happening to you. Say like, oh, what could I do to get myself out of this solution? So yeah, focus more on growing and expanding as opposed to like being diminished. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave down a comment below expressing what you learned or if you learned anything or maybe you have more insights. I love learning so definitely put down your comments and I'd love to learn from you. And also if you've gone through a similar situation to what I went through or what David went through where in order to get out of an awful situation you actually just embraced that situation and showed up with gratitude and happiness. So I'd, like, I'd love to know if you went through a similar situation. And yes, if you enjoyed this, please remember to share it and then hit the subscribe button and then the bell if you'd like to receive notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos every Saturday and there's two more videos in the law of the 12 laws of the universe. So it's so crazy that we've already done 10. And then also give this video a like if you enjoyed it, obviously. But thanks guys and thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next week with a new video. Bye guys!